Yeah, seems like there's no end to it. Oh, let's take a bit of a break, huh? Good idea. I'm about half played out myself. Oh, good evening, Sheriff. Adam, how are you? Hi, Roy. Oh, Roy. Hi, Roy. Ain't enough daylight for you Cartwrights anymore? Huh? Oh. Oh, well, we ran into a rock slide on the way into town. It took about four hours to clear the road. Lem here was good enough to stay open so we could load the wagon. I didn't figure it was robbing old Lem here. <laughs> Seems like a quite enough night, Roy. You heading home? Well, not yet a while. There's still a few dark corners that I got to poke into. Well, good night, boys. Hope right. you don't run into any more rock slides. Yeah. <laughs> Take right, it easy, Roy. Sheriff. <laughs> Come on, let's get to work and finish up, huh? All right. Come on, let's see a little faster now. You're covered, mister. Hold it right there. Now step down off that horse slow and easy. Come on. Express office. One of them rode his horse right over me. Get the doctor, hurry. Job flattering. Just for calling. <laughs> well, that ought to hold you until you get to San Francisco. Doc, I don't feel like rambling all over the countryside with this thing on my leg. You've done a pretty good job now, of flattering. Now, you heard the doc. Condition your legs in. There's only one man this side of St. Louis can put it right again, and he's in San Francisco. Now, you either make that trip or you could spend the rest of your life on a crutch. Yeah. Well, you put it that way, and I guess it ain't such a hard choice to make. I'm going out and get a little breakfast. Can I bring you something? Doc, I got a lot of things to do. How long do I have to stay here? Until that cast sets good and hard. I'll bring you a plate of ham and eggs, all right? All right, thanks. Well, that looks pretty good. Oh, come on now, Roy. You'll be back in no time. Ben, would you do something for me? Sure. Name it. Put that badge on till I get back. Oh. Now, Roy, you, you're, not, you're not being serious. I was never more serious in my life. Oh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Well, the people of Virginia City be saying the Ponderosa's coming into town and taking over. People would say no such of a thing. Oh, yes, they would, yes, they would. Well, what they would say is that I picked the best man for the job. Well, I do thank you for that, Roy, but uh, I don't believe it'd be the right thing for me to do. You don't think so? No. Well, one of your boys, then. Any one of them can handle the it. same thing, don't you see? But somebody's got to take over while I'm gone. This town needs the law. Uh, well, there must be plenty of other men to do the job. For instance? Well, Ed Prentice? He's away on a cattle drive. Uh, Phil Cassidy. 
They put him on as a foreman at the mine last week, and I'm sure he wouldn't want to trade them big wages for a sheriff's pay. No. How about that young fellow with that little starvation spread out be you? What's his name again? Oh, uh, you mean, um, um, Asa Moran. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's, uh... Yeah, now, so long as it's out your way, would you mind talking to him and making sure he'd take the job? Well, Roy, uh, we haven't been exactly the best of neighbors of late. Ever since he had that run-in with Adam. What run-in? I guess it started a few years back when they were both showing bulls down at the stock show, and I guess Moran didn't take too well to Adam running off with the with the blue ribbon. And then of course there was. Ben, the... what would that have to do with whether or not he makes a good sheriff? Huh? Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> all right, I'll talk to him. Now, will you just rest easy? Everything's going to be all right. I will now. Drink, drink of water. Thanks. Hi, Hoss. One of your riders stopped by and said your pa wanted to see me. Come on in. Thank you. I'll go get Paul. You want a sandwich? Oh, no, thanks. You say, Hoss, do you know why your pa wants to see me? No, I ain't got no notion. Well, I... Last week, six or eight head of my stock got into your pasture land. I was wondering if your pa was sore at my scrub stuff mixing in with his fancy purebred cattle. Oh, Asa, uh, you know better than that. Point the kind of feller to jump on a man about something that couldn't be helped. Asa, hey, glad you could ride over. Uh, how you feeling? Fine, fine, just fine, thank Good. you. Good? Good. Oh, uh, son, uh, would you mind uh, letting Asa and me have a little private conversation here? Sure, Paul. See you, Asa. Um, I'll sit down. Thank you. Well, how are things going? Oh, well, uh, you know how it is, Mr. Cartwright. It's a struggle. Always seem to be coming up a day late and a dollar short. <laughs> but I'm not complaining. No, no. No, I, I know that. Hey, sir. How would you like to take on a temporary job? Make yourself a little extra cash. I don't know at all. What sort of job? Well, uh, you heard what happened to Roy Coffee. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Roy and I were talking about, uh, you know, somebody to fill in while he's getting well. And Well, how would you like to take it on? What do you mean? You mean me, me being sheriff? Yeah. Well, just until Roy gets gets better. Yeah. Hmm? Well, I don't know. It's kind of sudden. I mean, why me? I never wore no badge before. No, but but. Well, you're a you're a steady young fellow, and you're able. And, well, Roy thought you could do a good job of it, and so do I. What about the people in town? They they, they don't hardly know me. What would they think? Well, I, I guess it sort of depends on what kind of job you do. Well, yeah, yeah I guess that's right. <laughs> I swear to uphold and enforce the laws of Virginia City to the best of my conscience and my ability. So help me God. Congratulations, Asa. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. You bet. Now, here's your... Here, here's your badge. Thank you. Here's the keys to jail. Thanks. And there's the keys to the office. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Sheriff Moran. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Cartwright. Congratulations. I, uh, I don't know very much about this sort of thing, but I'll sure try to do as good a job as I can. We know you will, Asa. Well, there's one more thing. You're entitled to a deputy if you want one. It might be a good idea. Oh? Well, I wouldn't rightly know just who to pick. Say, uh, 
How about Charlie Fitch, my hired man? Do you think he'd do? That's your choice to make, Asa. Oh, I, I know he's not very bright. But he's big and strong, and he'll do anything I tell him to do. Do I bring him here to have you deputize him, or...? Well, I'm leaving for San Francisco in just about two minutes, but I'm sure Judge Jackson there will do it for you. Or, if you prefer it that way, you're empowered by your office to do your own deputizing. Well, I'm out there. I'll just look him up then. I uh, certainly appreciate your show of confidence in me. Thank you. Good luck. Hope you have an easy trip, Sheriff Coffee. Thank you, Asa, and good luck to you. Thank you. Take it easy now. No, do that already. Right. Watch some steps. Yeah, yeah Sheriff. Bye. Bye. Good luck. Oh, I'll have a good time there. <laughs> Yeah, they'll fix them up real good. <laughs> now, easy getting in there. Yeah, who we got for a driver? Old Jake here, the best. Hello, sir. Up we go. Up there. there we are. Roy, you write to us. Let us know if you need anything. I'll do that. And don't worry about Asa. He's going to be all right. Ben, sure. you've been just wonderful about this whole right. thing. And you two, Adam, goodbye. It's all right. Goodbye, folks. Oh, now, you take it easy with him now. Don't shake him up too much. I'll do that. <laughs> Let her go. Let her go. Yes, sir. Hey, Asa. Take a real man to fill his boots. More of a man than the one we have? I didn't say that. Now, well, this is Asa's first chance to show what kind of a man he really is. Let's see if we can give him a fair shake. Fine. just down by the express office. There's two horses in the alley. I think someone's in there. Charlie, uh, are you sure? Yeah, don't you think we better check? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. There are the horses, Asa. they go out that way. Now, when you're all set, I'll give a yell for them to come out. Whichever way they go, we'll get them. All right. Oh, no, wait a minute. Better let me have the big one. You've been in the express office. You come out of there. Because we got the place surrounded. Now, no tricks. You throw your guns out and come out through that door. That's good. Now, you come right out where we can see you. Come on out. Don't shoot. Willie! What'd you do that for? He wasn't going to do nothing. You stay where you are. We threw our guns out just like you asked. Don't move! You didn't even give him a chance. My gosh, Asa. I killed him, Charlie. Sure did. You sure killed him, Asa. I had to, Charlie. You know that, don't you? I had to do that. You know it. Sure you did, Asa. You're the sheriff.
By the time you got back? What took you so long? I've been doing what you asked me to do, down at the express office, listening. And Judge Jackson and the man that ran the place were there. And they were sure interested in everything that went on last night. They were asking a lot of questions. Did you tell them what I said? About those two hold-up men trying to jump us? That's why I had to kill them? I told them something like that. Something like that? Now, you tell me, what did you say exactly? I told them that it looked like those men were trying to fight. At a time like that, a man ain't got time to stop and think. Did folks believe it? The way you told about it? Did they believe it? I don't know. Judge Jackson's got a way of looking at a man that sends a chill clear through you. That's why I left when I did. Hey, sir. Do you think they're gonna believe us? They'd better believe it. And you'd better remember, when you're asked, those two men tried to jump us. And we stick to it! Uh, Judge Jackson, anything wrong? Sheriff, the express agent just got a telegraph message from the head office of the company about what happened last night. Oh, yes, about those uh, two men, I... Uh... That's right, Sheriff. They offer hearty congratulations for a job well done and authorize payment of this reward. Reward? $200 gold. Congratulations, Sheriff. Roy Coffey knew what he was doing when he picked you for this job. Good work. Oh, good work. Good work. Good work. Good work. Right. He sure did. Lou? Might as well take the horses over to the wagon shop. All right, Mr. Cartwright. They're going to pull that new wagon back to the Ponderosa. They might as well get used to it. Yeah. Well, we'll be in the saloon. When you get through, come back and I'll buy you a drink. Yeah. I'll go to Adam. I'll take you up on that. Good. Well, drink it up, boys. Drink up the red eye. Hooray for summer doings, huh? <laughs> Oh, yeah, now, well, looky here. Here's the man that talked me into the job. Come on, Ben. Adam, I'll buy you a drink. What is this, Asa? Some kind of celebration? Well... You haven't heard it? Asa's just about the biggest man in town. Oh, now, Vicky. Well, it's true. Asa shot it out last night with two men who were robbing the express office, and he killed them both. Well, I don't take no pleasure in killing folks, but then they shouldn't ought to make no fight of it. See, I was all for taking him alive, but when this one come at me with his gun and the other tried to draw down on me from behind, well, there was nothing I could do. Isn't that right, Ben? Oh, sure, he's a sheriff has a right to defend himself. You don't think I did anything wrong, do you? No, Ace, I don't think you did anything wrong. Adam, what do you think? There's nothing else you could do. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. Well, come on now, sit down. I'll buy you a drink. Hey, bartender, bring some drinks here for my friends, the Cartwrights. Well, that's nice, Asa. There we are. Oh, your money's no good here today, Asa. What? This one's on the house. <laughs> Toast to the new sheriff, Asa Moran. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I gotta get going. I got me some shopping to do. Oh, Asa. Huh? Did you spend all that reward money in one place now? Oh, no, ma'am. Well, I'm gonna buy me some store-bought clothes. These old rags of mine are just about wore out. <laughs> <laughs> He's really enjoying it, isn't he? Mm-hmm. He's got a right to see his life. You believe it happened the way he said? Big blazing gun battle? Well, I don't know. I wasn't there. And neither were you, Adam. <laughs> oh, hi, Lou. Hi, Vicky. Oh, uh, everything ready, Lou? Ready. The thing ain't even finished yet. You see, now they won't be able to get to it till the morning. Oh. Well, sit down, Lou. Well, I guess uh, you better stay in town overnight and bring the wagon out in the morning. No use in making two trips. That's fine by me, Mr. Cartwright. Say, I saw Asa Moran as I came over here. That badge makes his chest stick out a mile. 
Uh, it's not just a badge, Lou. He's a hero, didn't you hear? No, is that right? Yep. like you got yourself a ride on the glory road today. Anything wrong with these clothes? Well, uh, Ace is a new sheriff, and he's got to dress the part, Lou. <laughs> What's so funny, then? Nothing. I was just thinking about an awful big letdown it's going to be for you when you have to come on down to Earth and be playing old Ace and Moran again. may have just made yourself one real first-class enemy. Oh, Ace, you sure scared me. you to do. See, you've got a set of new store-bought clothes. You got something to say about the way they look, too? Well, gosh, no, Asa. I, I think they look fine. Well, then you just better start calling me Mr. Moran. What? Why, Asa? I said Mr. Moran. That Lou Palmer. Working for the Cartwrights has made him as uppity as them. You ain't had no trouble with the Cartwrights, have you? Not yet, Charlie. Not yet. I wouldn't go hunting no trouble with the Cartwright. They're a pretty close family. You take on one of them, you gotta take on them all. I'm not scared of no Cartwright. One or all of them. You better remember one thing, Charlie. I'm the sheriff of this town, and there's many a thing a sheriff can do. What do you mean? I swore an oath on a Bible to uphold the law in this town. That means going up against anybody who tries to break it, whether his name is Cartwright or anything else. You ain't expecting no Cartwright to go breaking the law, are you? They're law-abiding people. They better be, Charlie. They sure better be. Well, I'm sure glad that wagon wasn't ready. Otherwise, I wouldn't be sitting here this evening drinking beer with a pretty girl. Oh, thank you. I didn't know you thought I was pretty. Well, sure. And I never told you that. Well, even if I never did, a girl sure ought to know when she's pretty. I mean, but she's real pretty the way you are. <laughs> oh, you're nice. Asa, <laughs> <laughs> we were just sitting here having a beer. Hmm. I was hoping you'd be alone. Asa. It was very nice of Lou to invite me to have a beer with him. Wouldn't you like to sit down and have a beer, too? Lou wouldn't mind. Sure, Ace, sit down. No hard feelings. Let me buy you a beer. If you can't tell him, Vicky, I can. Go home to the Cartwrights, Lou. Ace, Ace, I think you're the one that ought to go home. I'll be here tomorrow. 
Tomorrow ain't good enough. Now, if you want to be my girl like you was acting this afternoon, I don't want you associating with the likes of him. Well, where did you get the idea I want to be your girl? What's wrong with me, anyhow? Are you threatening me? Why, you yellow-livered swamper. You forget you ain't got the cartwrights to back you up. I don't need the cartwrights to take care of you. You're under arrest for striking an officer of the law. Somebody's coming. It's kind of early for visitors, isn't it? Whoever it is, reckon why I don't knock. That might be a good idea if somebody went to see. It. Yeah. Look, an old is on in a fight with anybody. He's been pistol whipped. Who'd have done this to Lou? Well, who did this to you now? You didn't get hurt like this in a plain old fight. No. Well, who did it? Asa. Asa Moran. Paul, what are we going to do about it? We'll take care of Lou. We'll ride into town and see that new sheriff of ours. Hurry up with that water. Well, look, I'll go in and talk to Asa. You boys take care of the horses. We'll be here for some time. And I'd like to talk to Asa, too. Not till you simmer down. Take the horses over to the livery stable. Why did you do that to Lou Palmer? Do what? Beat him near to death. What do you mean, beat him near to death? He was resisting arrest, and I had to take him in. What did he do that was against the law? He tried to kill me. I guess that's against the law, ain't it? That isn't the way Lou said it. I don't care what he said. He's a friend of yours. Now, you. You told me that a lawman's got the right to defend himself. And that's exactly what I was doing. Now you're going to tell me I ain't got the right to defend myself against friends of yours? I'm telling you that you don't have the right to use that badge as an excuse to pistol whip a man. Now you listen to me, Cartwright. This badge gives me the right to do anything I want. Within the law. That's right. Judge, you didn't see him. I did. And I'm going to tell you something. There's absolutely no excuse in the world for this sort of thing. Then. Sheriff Moran has already told me about that incident. I bet he has. He told me that this Lou Palmer was annoying one of the girls in the saloon. And that when the sheriff told him to go home, he started a fight. Fight? Judge, don't you understand? He was pistol whipped within an inch of his life. 
Are you saying that the sheriff is lying about what happened? George, Lou came into my house. I saw his face. It was half bashed in. Now, he told me exactly what happened, and I believe him. Ben, I've got Sheriff Moran's official report right here about what went on. Your man was wild and disorderly in the saloon. He actively resisted arrest. It was necessary for the sheriff to subdue him. But, out of deference to the fact that he works for you, he released him, sent him home, instead of locking him up. Oh, yes, he sent him home, all right. Sent him home half dead. Now, look, George, I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. Moran has to be relieved of duty until there can be a complete hearing on this. I'm, I'm afraid that would be a very serious mistake. Why? It would appear to be an official criticism of Moran's actions. Yes, exactly. Yes, but we have absolutely no evidence to merit such criticism. I'm sorry your man was hurt, Ben. But I have absolutely no reason to believe that Moran's action was anything more than a, a legal and justified act on the part of a qualified law officer. I keep telling you I was nowhere near this place last night. So how could I know what happened? Well, Asa didn't tell you about it, huh? He don't tell me everything he does. Mr. Moran's pretty busy. He's got a lot on his mind these days. Yeah, I bet he has. Those two dead men. You, uh, you were there when they were killed, weren't you, Charlie? Sure I was. Right in the middle of all that shooting. Well, I wasn't right in the middle of it. I was off a ways, but, but I could see it all good enough. Well, you could see it, but you let Asa do all the shooting. Why didn't you help him out? Isn't that what a deputy's for? I didn't expect to do no shooting. It happened pretty fast. You went to stop two men who were robbing the express office, and you didn't think you'd have to shoot. Huh? Sure I did. But Mr. Moran, he yelled in and told them to throw their guns outside. And they did that, and they come out. He told him what? Mr. Moran yelled and told him to throw their guns out. And to come out. Come out with their hands up. They was trying to fight us. That's how come he shot them. Wow, without their guns. Well, when the first one come out, he tripped. And it looked like he was going after that gun right enough. And it all happened pretty fast. Oh, you got me so mixed up. Now, what are you mixed up about, Charlie? About the two men at the express office. About how you shot it out with two men who had no guns. Now, that sounds a little different from the way you told it. I told you, Adam, that weren't the way it was. Well, I bet Judge Jackson would like to hear from you, too, how it really was. But he'd like to hear about Lou Palmer, too. Yeah, I'm sure he'd like to hear how it really was with Lou. Now, wait a minute. You're not going to go talk. You hit him pretty hard, Mr. Moran. He asked for it. Now, let's cart his carcass over to the jailhouse. These poor cartwrights can't hold their liquor. He's gonna be madder than a hornet when he comes to. I better get the key and lock him up. No, Charlie. We're gonna leave this unlocked. But he'll get out, Mr. Moran. That's right. He'll get out. And when he does, he's gonna get killed, trying to escape. See, we, we, we gotta keep him quiet now, Charlie. And we're going to keep him quiet for good and all. <laughs> hey, Joe! Boss! Where are you off to in such a rush? He's going into the jail to get at him. What? Yeah. Ace has got him behind bars in there. Ace hit him over the head with a gun. What? 
What are we doing standing here gabbing? Let's go get out of here. Right. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, I'll, uh, I'll go in there myself. Paul, you against both of them? I'm not going to be against anybody. Now, we're going to stick to the law on this, all of us. You two wait out here. Well, I think we're going to go... I said wait out here. I'm just as mad about this thing as you are, but you two dad-blamed hot-tempered, both of you. Wait outside. I want to go in there. Can't let you do that, Ben. I want to see Adam. Not in my jail. Oh, look, I'm his father. I have a right to see him. Ben, you better get out of here before you get into trouble. All right. I'll post bail for him. No, sir. He's a hostile prisoner. Ain't nobody bailing out a hostile prisoner out of my jail. Look, Asa, I'm told you hit him over the head with a gun. I'm told he's hurt. No, no, he's all right. He's fine. He's fine. Yeah? Good. Then you won't mind if a doctor sees him. I'll go get Doc Martin. No. You ain't seen him. No doc has seen him. Nobody's seen him till I say so. Now, listen to me, Tommy! Oh, you're a witness. He's attacking an officer. Why are you doing this, Asa? Just trying to keep the law like I was hired to do. Folks go breaking the law. I gotta deal with them the way I see fit. You know my son's no lawbreaker. Is it obstructing an officer? Obstructing an officer and disturbing the peace. You learn the words fast, Asa. Too bad you don't learn what goes with them. Asa? Asa. Pull that trigger and I'll kill you. All right, throw the gun over there on the floor. I was going to make sure Adam's all right. Fitch, get the key and open the door. Bob. Are you all right? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. You go, go look after Adam. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Bring me a key to the store. Mark. Oh. <coughs> you all right, Adam? Oh, yeah. yeah. We better get into the dock quick, Joe. He's got a big crack on the head. You all right? You taking him out of here? Take him to the doctor. You take that prisoner out of here, I'm going to be after you. I'm going to be after you with everybody in town behind me. You come ahead, Asa. We'll be at Doc Martin's house at the edge of town. You'll find us there. I told you we ought to let them Cartwrights be. That horse like to kill me. Will you stop yammering? I can hardly think. Now we'll never get shut of those Cartwrights. When I'm through, they'll wish they were shut of me. Now, will you get out of here so I can think? I'm going down to the barbershop and have them put a leech on this eye. Judge Jackson. What's happened here, Sheriff? It's all over town that you arrested Adam Cartwright. I did obstructing an officer and disturbing the peace. And Ben Cartwright came in here with his two boys, jumped Charlie and me, and broke their brother out of jail. Well, that certainly doesn't sound like the Cartwrights. Well, that's the way it happened. 
I want a warrant for their arrest. Oh, I don't know. This whole thing between you and the Cartwrights has gotten out of hand. That's right, and the only way to set it straight is to jail him. Now, I think we ought to let the whole thing cool down for a little while. Besides, Acer, I understand that you roughed Adam up pretty bad. Oh, no. no I was just performing my duty as a law officer. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm certain of that. But did it ever occur to you that his father and his brothers might be worried about him? That ain't no excuse. And you know it ain't. Not for what they done. No. No, you're right, it isn't. Folks breaking the law have got to be brought to account. Now, Judge, I didn't ask for this job. But now that I got it, I got to do it as I see fit. That means going up against anyone who breaks the law, including the Cartwrights. All right, Sheriff. But when you go after them, I go with you. To avoid any more violence. We've had too much of that already. That's right. Now, let's make out those warrants. Should have stayed put like you told me. But I had a feeling Asa didn't have to kill those two men at the express office. Oh, Adam, I've been a blend fool. Just couldn't see Moran for what he really is. Some men, you just can't trust him with authority of any kind. That was our mistake, picking that kind of man. Well, it's almost worth the headache to hear you admit that you're wrong for once. It'll be all right, but only because he inherited that thick Cartwright scum. You know he come any close to being killed. Oh, we didn't hurt him then, bringing him in from jail. Oh no, no, you, you did right. Probably saved his life, judging from the treatment the prisoners get in that jail. Asa. He said he'd have the whole town with him. He's got a good part of it right now. Then, you know there can't be a ruckus in here. Well, there isn't going to be any ruckus. Not in here. Well, I'm going out there. You two stay here. If they get past me, you stop them. I got warrants for your arrest, Ben, you and your boys. Stay inside. Judge, did you issue those warrants? Yes. Yes, I did, Ben. You know, you were wrong in doing what you did, especially the jailbreak. Yeah, I guess that was wrong. There, you see, it admits it itself. Even you can't go against the law, Ben Cartwright. Even you ain't that big. Well, come on, come on. What are we waiting for? Hold on there. Judge, you say I was wrong and take my boy out of jail. Well, maybe that was a mistake, according to law. But what about that other mistake, the big one? The one that led up to all the wrong things that have happened in the town the last couple of days. What mistake was that, Ben? A mistake we all made when we pinned a badge on a man too weak to wear it. Now, is that the real cause for everything that's happened here since Sheriff Coffey left town? Come on, we're wasting time listening to all this gab. Let's take him. You two, Hoss. Joe, you raise your hands. You're under arrest. Johnny. Johnny, didn't you take an oath to uphold and enforce the laws of Virginia City according to your ability and your conscience? Didn't you, Charlie? Isn't that right? That's right, Mr. Cartwright. Well, why don't you tell us what you told Adam about those two men at the express office the other night? Quiet, Charlie. Well, what's the matter, Asa? I think we should all hear what Charlie has to say. Are you free to let him tell us? I don't have to stand for this. 
I'm not on trial here. I'm a law officer. I came here to arrest jailbreakers. Why did you arrest Adam? Because he was talking to your deputy? Or because he found out that you killed two unarmed men? That's a lie, is it? You see what he's trying to do, don't you? He's twisting everything around. So I'm in the wrong and he's in the right. Judge, you give me those warrants. No. They've got to go to jail and you know it. Now, wait a minute. Is that the truth? Were those two men unarmed when Moran killed them? That ain't the way it was. You tell him, Mr. Moran. Don't get riled, Charlie. I told everybody, just like you told me to tell everybody. Shut up. I, I told everybody how it looked like they were going to fight. Shut up! What are you afraid of, Asa? Afraid for people to know that you shot down two men in cold blood after they'd thrown their guns down? You afraid for people to know that your pistol whipped Lou Palmer? I've never shot at one of these before. You didn't shoot at the badge, Ben. You shot at the man. Yeah. 